Namaste children. Welcome back again to this virtual class. So in the past episode, we have discussed about some of the most important chemical properties of acids and bases. We have also seen how strength of an acid or a base could be identified on the basis of pH scale. So we have seen that when we talk about pH scale, the value of pH scale ranges from 0 to 14 and in that we have seen lesser the value more will be the acidic character, greater the pH value the greater will be the basic strength. So more the value basic strength increases, lesser the value acidic strength will be more. So this way we have understood pH scale. Moving further, we have also seen the neutralization reaction, acid base chemical reaction. So we have learned that whenever an acid reacts with the base, we get the salt, right? Now in today's episode, we will be learning what will be the chemical nature of the salt so obtained from acid base reaction, whether the salt is neutral, whether the salt obtained will be acidic or basic, right? So this episode is all about knowing more about the family of salts. Let us now learn the chemical behavior of the salts before going to learn this some of the things that you should know. You should know the parent acid and parent base from which the salt is obtained number one. Number two you should know the weak acid, strong acid, weak base and a strong base. If you could know these things then you can easily find the chemical nature of the salt. So firstly we will see the weak acids, weak bases, strong bases and the strong acids. So dear students look at the screen here, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid are considered to be strong acids. So always keep in mind that these acids are available in the lab. All these laboratory acids are classified under strong acids. And potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, all these are the strong bases. When we talk about the weak acids and weak bases, formic acid, acetic acid, oxalic acid, all these acids are classified under weak acids. Whereas ammonium hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, zinc hydroxide, all these hydroxides are considered under weak bases. So now you are much clear about the strong acids, strong bases, weak acids and weak bases. On the basis of this information, this knowledge, we can find the chemical nature of the salt so obtained as a result of acid base reaction. Dear students, in order to find that, we should have the knowledge of the combination of acids, bases, weak acids and let us understand this and from that you can easily know the chemical nature of the acid. Students, suppose if the base which we are making reaction that is a strong base reacts with the strong acid will give you a salt which is of neutral. Got it? Likewise, if weak base reacts with weak acid then also we get a salt that will be neutral. So from this we can understand that either of strong acid or strong base or weak base of and weak acid gives you salt of neutral. So the chemical nature will be neutral. Now remaining other two types let us see here when a strong base reacts with weak acid then what type of salt we will get. Likewise, when weak base reacts with the strong acid, in that case also, in all the cases, strong base, strong acid, we are going to get neutrals, weak base, weak acid, we are going to get a neutral. But if the base chosen is strong and acid is weak, in that case, the strong will be preferred or dominated. So the acid so formed will be, here you see the strong is base, so the salt will be basic. Got it? Now here you see weak base reacts with the strong acid here. Strong will be dominated. So domination is acidic. So the salt will be acidic. What it children? So by this information we can easily find the nature of the salt obtained. Let us talk about some of the familiar salts. 
so when we talk about the salts sodium chloride is one of the salt which we find it in our uh, home we call it as a common salt right sodium chloride is there uh, potassium nitrate is there right then uh, zinc sulfate is there then um, we can sodium carbonate is there na2co3 so all these are some of the examples of the salts right now we don't know the nature of the salts whether it is neutral acidic or basic let us find out first we will see about the sodium chloride so sodium chloride we should find the parent base and the parent acid so we write the formula of nacl always keep in mind children the first part that is the cationic part is obtained from the base and anionic part is always obtained from the acid so first one will be the cationic part sodium when we add hydroxide sodium hydroxide that will be the base so here we are writing we can write here sodium hydroxide so sodium chloride is obtained from the reaction acid base reaction the base will be sodium hydroxide and acid will be chlorine that is hydrochloric acid we know that in hydrochloric acid chlorine is there so the acid which contain chlorine would be hydrochloric acid upon reaction we will get sodium chloride plus water this we have already discussed right now we have to find the nature of the salt sodium hydroxide as we have already learned sodium hydroxide is a strong base sodium so and uh, and hydrochloric acid is uh, strong acid we know that when strong base react with the strong acid the salt will be neutral so this salt will be neutral got it children very easy no now let us find the second chemical equation here potassium nitrate so potassium nitrate potassium when we write potassium nitrate potassium is obtained from the base koh potassium hydroxide plus no3 that is nitric acid hno3 hno3 will give you kno3 plus water what it now we have to find koh is a strong acid or strong base or weak base koh is a strong base so here we are right strong base nitric acid is also strong acid we know that strong base strong acid will give you neutral salt but it, now let us find out another salt chemical nature of another salt zinc sulfate so when we talk about zinc sulfate i am writing here zinc sulfate zinc is the cationic part so zinc is ob obtained from zinc hydroxide we can write here zinc hydroxide when reacts with zinc sulfate sulfate is obtained from the acid sulfuric acid so we write here h2so4 and this students upon reaction we will be getting here zinc sulfate plus water we are going to get we are going to get now zinc sulfate is sorry zinc hydroxide is a weak base this is weak base and sulfuric acid is a strong acid so upon when weak base react with the strong acid see here weak base react with the strong acid here strong will be the dominant factor so the salt what we obtain will be acidic or basic this will be acidic got it very easy now let us see the next uh, salt that is sodium carbonate so sodium carbonate sodium is obtained from NaOH sodium hydroxide and when carbonate car carbonate is obtained from carbonic acid the formula of carbonic acid is H2CO3 upon this we will be getting here Na2CO3 I am not balancing this chemical reaction you balance all the chemical reactions right now sodium hydroxide as we know that it is a strong base and carbonic acid is a weak acid so here is c weak acid now dominant factor will be preferred here so strength strong base so the salt so obtain see, see here strong base weak base so here strong base here sorry weak acid here right weak acid strong base weak acid will give you basic salt so by knowing this information by 
if you could find the parent acid and parent base and having the knowledge of weak acid weak base strong acid strong base you can easily find the chemical nature of the salt obtained what is children so this way you can easily find the chemical nature of salt so this is all about the salts now let us understand one of the most important salt which we use in our day to day life that is common salt sodium chloride dear children as we know that sodium chloride is obtained from the sea right so this sodium chloride is a cheaply available or a cheap salt which is available in the sea and this sodium chloride is one of the most important raw material for making various other products which we are using in our day to day life what are those so this session we are going to discuss all those chemical substances which we obtain from sodium chloride and as per as examination is concerned these salts or these substances which we use in our day to day life will be asked let us see uh, as per the examination point and as per the syllabus also so let us see the let us see how sodium chloride is used as a raw material for making various day to day products dear children when electricity is passed through an aqueous solution of sodium chloride then we get some chemical substances let us understand this so as we are seeing the sodium use of sodium chloride as a raw material for various chemicals let us understand with an equation so that you will understand it in a better way so see here sodium chloride an aqueous solution of sodium chloride the aqueous solution of sodium chloride as you know that aqueous solution is the solution which is obtained when something is dissolved in water so when sodium chloride is dissolved in water we call it as aqueous solution of sodium chloride and this aqueous solution of sodium chloride is also known as brine solution children keep in mind this is brine solution so brine solution is the sol aqueous solution of sodium chloride when electricity is passed when electricity is passed through a through an aqueous solution of sodium chloride we will get some products what are they they are sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen plus chlorine so this is one of the most important chemical reaction by using this chemical reaction we get some by products by using this products we can make number of chemical substances which we use in our day to day life dear students this reaction is also known as chloralkali process what is that it is called chloralkali process why because here sodium hydroxide so obtained here this is called alkali and we are also getting chlorine gas in this chemical reaction we are getting chlorine gas as well as an alkali that is sodium hydroxide so this equation this chemical reaction is also known as chloralkali process as a result of this chloralkali process we are getting sodium hydroxide hydrogen and chlorine and uses of sodium hydroxide hydrogen and chlorine is already there in your textbook just you go through the uses of this by making use of this chemical reaction how various chemical substances are produced about that we are going to discuss dear children now we are going to discuss one of the most important chemical substance which we use in our day to day life that is bleaching powder yes children it is bleaching powder as you know the use of bleaching powder now you should know how this bleaching powder is produced manufactured so you should know the formula of bleaching powder the chemical formula of bleaching powder is caocl2 this is also known as calcium oxychloride right so how bleaching powder is produced about that we will see when chlorine gas is passed where do we get chlorine gas we know that in a chloralkali process we are getting chlorine right when this chlorine gas is passed through a solution of calcium hydroxide that is slaked lime or lime water we say then what happens let us see here calcium hydroxide when 
chlorine gas what we have obtained in the above chloroalkyl process when it is passed through calcium hydroxide then we get CaOCl2 that is bleaching powder and we get to water what is children so this is the way by which we can make the we can prepare bleaching powder so when uh, in so as far as the preparation of bleaching powder is concerned simple you just remember the chemical equation by using this chemical equation you can easily define the or you can you can explain the preparation so here when you pass chlorine gas through a solution of calcium hydroxide then calcium oxychlorate also known as bleaching powder is produced now what are the various properties and uses of this bleaching powder where do we use this bleaching powder Dear students, the most important use of bleaching powder is it acts as a bleaching agent in various industries. Firstly, it acts as a bleaching agent in cotton and linen in the textile industry. Secondly, it acts as a bleaching agent for bleaching wood pulp in paper factories. And finally, it also acts as a bleaching agent in laundries for washing clothes. So, Altogether, we can say that the main purpose of bleaching powder in the industry level is as a bleaching agent. Got it? Now, see the second important use of bleaching powder that is, it acts as an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries. We have already learned that oxidizing agent is a chemical substance which is capable of supplying oxygen. So, in bleaching powder, we find oxygen. So, it can supply oxygen so it acts as an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries and the third and the most important use of bleaching powder in our day-to-day -day life is for disinfecting drinking water so in our locality the water treatment plant uses this bleaching powder to disinfect water in order to get it free from germs so these are the most important users of bleaching powder dear students in cbsc examinations the questions on bleaching powder will be asked especially from the users of bleaching powders so dear students you should be very thorough and familiar with the uses what we have discussed Children, you are very much familiar with a type of salt which we use in our day-to-day -day life for cooking purpose, for making crispy pakoda, soft and spongy idli vada and all those things. One of the substance we use is baking soda. The chemical name of baking soda is sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now let us see how this component is prepared. Let us see the preparation of baking soda. So before that you should know the molecular formula of baking soda it is NaHCO3 it is also known as sodium hydrogen carbonate right now let us see how it is prepared the main raw material for the preparation of baking soda is sodium chloride dear students when sodium chloride is made to react with some other chemical substances such as water carbon dioxide and ammonia NH3 then we get two products namely NH4Cl plus the main product NHCO3 that is baking soda what is children so this is how baking soda can be prepared by making use of this chemical reaction so the thing is you have to remember the four reacting species Upon chemical reaction, we will get ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is our baking soda. In the next section, we will be discussing about how the food materials are made soft and spongy with the help of baking soda. Now, let us see the properties and uses of this sodium hydrogen carbonate. Let us now discuss various uses of sodium hydrogen carbonate. The first use of sodium hydrogen carbonate is for making baking powder. Dear students, you should know what is a baking powder. Baking powder is a mixture of baking soda and a mild edible acid such as tartaric acid. When baking powder is heated or mixed with water, 
the reaction goes like this as you can see now here in this chemical equation you can see very well that upon heating it or mixing it with any acid here h plus is written here h plus is the ion obtained from acid as we already learned before that all the acids can displace hydrogen ion so the displaced hydrogen ion when reacts with the sodium hydrogen carbonate then carbon dioxide water and sodium salt of the particular acid will be produced now you see here due to this chemical reaction we are getting carbon dioxide as one of the product right here when sodium hydrogen carbonate is mixed with the food item upon heating what happens carbon dioxide gas is evolved and this carbon dioxide gas escapes from the food material as a result of this creating some space between the particles thereby it causes the bread or the cake to rise making them soft and spongy the second use of sodium hydrogen carbonate is it is an active ingredient in antacids and you should know the chemical nature of the salt is basic salt due to this basic nature the excess acid produced in our stomach is neutralized due to the basic nature of this salt so we can say that sodium hydrogen carbonate is acts as an active ingredient in all the antacids thirdly it is also used in soda acid fire extinguishers as we know that when this soda reacts with the acid produces carbon dioxide and you should know carbon dioxide is the gas which can be used to extinguish fire so sodium hydrogen carbonate is used in soda acid fire extinguishers children you are very much familiar with the washing soda which we will be using in our day to day life for washing clothes apart from this this chemical substance is also engaged in various other activities let us see all those things before that let us first see how this washing soda is prepared let us understand the preparation of washing soda so as far as washing soda is concerned it is molecular formula be na2co3.10 h2o in this molecular formula you see here 10 h2o here dot 10 h2o is the water of crystallization now we see the preparation of washing soda in the previous section we have seen that when sodium hydrogen carbonate that is baking soda is heated then we used to get one of the products that is sodium carbonate na2co3 plus water and carbon dioxide right upon recrystallization of sodium carbonate one of the product we get is washing soda let us see that chemical reaction also here na2co3 upon recrystallization we will be getting here na2co3 dot 10 h2o that means in this chemical reaction we have to add water how many molecules here 10 molecules of water is to be added these water molecules enter into the formula unit what we call here washing soda dear students remember this chemical equation which is the preparation of washing soda now let us see the uses sodium carbonate that is washing soda is used in glass soap in paper industries secondly washing soda is used in the manufacture of sodium compounds such as borax sodium carbonate can be used as a cleaning agent for domestic purposes it is used for removing permanent hardness of water dear students you should know what is a hard water hard water is the water which contains salts such as magnesium calcium in order to remove permanent hardness washing soda is used in place of soap which cannot work on hard water washing soda can be used dear students water of crystallization is the fixed number of water molecules present in one formula unit of a salt for example copper sulfate what we see which is in blue color this is because some sort of water molecules get into its molecular formula so actual formula of copper sulfate is 
CuSO4 dot 5H2O. Here dot 5H2O is the water of crystallization. Actually, the water of crystallization is the water molecules present in the formula unit of the compound. They do not make the salt wet. So, we can say that the water of crystallization does not make the crystals or the salt wet. They appear to be dry but upon heating it the water molecule will go away. So, the blue color of copper sulfate is because of dot 5H2O that is water of crystallization. Upon heating the blue color disappears. Once again when you mix water then the blue color reappears. This is due to the fact that the required number of water molecules making them blue will be absorbed by the crystals. So this is all about water of crystallization. There are number of crystals available in the nature which has water of crystallization. Here washing soda has 10 molecules of water of crystallization. Likewise various other crystals have different molecules of water. We call it as water of crystallization. Students let us now learn one of the most important chemical substance which finds very much useful in making decorative items as you can see on the screen. So all these items are prepared with the help of plaster of Paris. In short we call it as POP. This POP is also used in giving support to the fractured bones as you can see this kind of arrangement right. So here a white color substance is applied where the bone fracture has taken place which gives external support. So this substance is called plaster of Paris. So this component is very very important right. Let us now learn how this POP that is plaster of Paris is prepared. So, in order to prepare plaster of Paris, you should know the plaster of Paris, the molecular formula of plaster of Paris is CaSO4 dot half H2O. Again, you see here dot H2O is there, right? So, here dot half H2O is water of crystallization. The name of this compound, the IUPAC name of this compound would be calcium sulfate, here calcium sulfate hemihydrate hemihydrate let us understand this see here calcium sulfate is available so we named it as calcium sulfate here water molecule the name of water molecule is a hydrate here half water molecule is there so half means hemi so hemihydrate this is how we can understand the molecular formula of plaster of paris and also in short plaster of paris is named as POP. But dear children, now let us see the preparation of plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris can be prepared on heating gypsum. So the molecular formula of gypsum is CaSO4 dot 2H2O. Again you see here dot 2H2O which is water of crystallization. At controlled temperature at 373 Kelvin then one and half molecules of water will be removed and CaSO4 dot half H2O. This is what the plaster of Paris is. So this is one of the very simple way by which plaster of Paris could be produced from the gypsum. But here you have to keep in mind that the temperature should be controlled. If we heat further or beyond this temperature what will happen? all the water molecules will be removed, evaporated we can say, right? So, there will not be any water molecules left. So, plaster of Paris we won't be getting if we heat, if we supply temperature greater than 373 Kelvin. So, students you are much familiar with the cement, right? When the cement is mixed with water, sand and stones and all and keeping it for some time then it becomes hard. The hard nature of the cement is because of a chemical substance. The name of the chemical substance is gypsum. So dear students, I believe you understood how chemical nature of different types of salts are known on the basis of the formula which we have discussed. Moving further, we have seen some of the most important chemical substances which we use in our day to day life and how they are prepared and what are the various uses and properties of those substances. 
so dear students that's all we have in today's class see you all on another day with a new topic till then keep learning take good care of yourself bye